All right, I'm the Fly Red Master, and well, I'm back from vacation and replaced my Logavolan hat that has been on the channel for a long time with a new one. <laughs> NATSF and Right to Repair. Are they good for our industry or, well, not? Now, one of the things I did a whole video about the changes to the key programming and having to have licenses and scan tool companies locking people out because of agreements, et cetera, et cetera. Now, that is something that I kind of was, un I believe, if I remember right, I was kind of neutral on. But the fact of the matter is, is I think it raises the price for consumers to have keys replaced already usually in a pretty expensive endeavor and nine times out of ten most shops are going to sublet it or they're going to just pass on the deal because they're not licensed don't have everything in line to program keys or they're going to do a bootleg that is circumventing that system anyway so it's really it's just a detriment to the general consumer, and as I said in that video, and I know I said this, it's really not going to help with stolen cars because, well, they're going to use illegal methods to steal cars. <laughs> they're not using legal methods. So, so it's pretty much kind of, well, stupid. But anyway, let's get into the right to repair. Now, if you're not familiar with right to repair, legislation's all over the place and the whole point of it is to make access to service information uh programming etc cetera, etc cetera, basically very inexpensive and readily available my problem with this is it's really not driven by need everything in the automotive world before anybody says anything i'm strictly talking automotive you can buy pretty much Every manufacturer's scan tool and information outside of some exotics, which if you're working on those, you better go through the methods to get that information in tooling. But for the average shop that works on BMW, Toyota, Ford, Chrysler, GM, it's readily available. The information is readily available. It costs. It's not cheap. Now, there's some companies like BMW, if you have a full subscription to their scan tool, it gives you access to all their service information, which is pretty freaking awesome. BMW is like $3,300 and the uh, J box that goes with it is another thousand maybe. And it gives you full access, full programming. There's no fees. That's kind of awesome. Now, other companies are less aftermarket friendly. But my point of that is, it's all available. Every manufacturer, including Mercedes-Benz, you know, again, except some exotics, but the average shop isn't going to be worried about, you know, working on a Lamborghini. But every other shop, everything is available, including Mercedes-Benz. Now, that one is a really expensive at like $25,000 or something like that. But the problem with right to repair is, is the people behind it want it all very cheap or free. Basically, they want the manufacturers to put up all their service information online and have it accessible by anybody, which I don't care about. Service information is readily available nowadays just because of the internet, and people will put it up, do a search. You can probably find what you need to find on the internet. But all the programming and all that stuff. Now, years and years and years ago, I got into an argument on IATN about support for, well, programming, and it was specifically with a GM dealer tech. And he was saying that the dealer side of it had a different support staff than the aftermarket. And the aftermarket side was considerably larger and yada, 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 yada. And imagine if every shop in the United States with a Autel J box or some Chinese J box they found on eBay is out there programming. Programming is easy when everything goes right. The problem is, is when it doesn't go right, that's when it gets really, really expensive. Even sometimes when you have real, a lot of experience, 
imagine all of the support that would have to be required for these manufacturers. It would be mind-numbing to realize how much cost would be involved in low-cost programming for, well, everybody. Because you figure you can probably buy a, a eBay cable for maybe 100, 200 bucks and Joe Schmo's out there programming his, you know, GM or Lexus and bricks every module in the car because he doesn't know what he's doing. And he's online screaming at tech support for GM or whoever. Not a good idea for, well, anybody. <laughs> I don't have a problem with having to pay for, well, proprietary information. These programs, the files that are written for these vehicles have to be written by somebody that has to get paid. You know, we're not talking about really profit. We're talking about a company's liabilities. You know, when they're coming out with a reflash for a vehicle that has a problem, somebody had to go through and figure out how to make that program. Somebody had to write a bunch of code to fix it. Adding all that to the consumer and them applying the wrong fix is not good for, well, anybody's car. And it's probably not a good idea for the average shop to do programming either. It's a special skill. And yeah, it's easy as all get out when everything goes well. You hit the button, it programs, you do the relearns or whatever you need to do. You're done. Car's fixed. Everybody's happy. The problem is most shops are not properly trained or equipped to do that kind of programming, just straight up. You have shop owners complaining they can't find quality techs to do nut and bolt repairs. What happens when those techs start doing programming? It's not going to end well. Is there stuff needs to be done, a right to repair for tractors and uh, heavy duty equipment? Yes. On consumer electronics, yes, definitely. Cars, it's all available. Pony up and spend the money and do it right. Quit trying to cheap out and get the government to make them do it for no money. Because it's not going to win. Because quite frankly, it's not going to end well for this industry. If you've got that many people doing bad jobs of programming, Companies are just going to start selling modules that are pre-programmed and that's going to be the only way to fix cars is because they can't support half the country programming. I'm exaggerating, of course, but, you know, a significant number of people that don't know what they're doing calling into tech support to try to get help because they screwed up. It's a fact. They're not going to be able to support that. The right to repair is just a bad idea. So I know this kind of rambled along, but I, my opinions are, you know, I thought about this a lot while I was on vacation. So as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flyer Aid Master.